SME Market Hub. Buy, sell, list, connect. Maison Mayfair, and uh, I'm so glad to be here. I mean, honestly, uh, since I came into town, I mean, I've been just overwhelmed by how talented, you know, and you know, how amazing the youths are. And I hope you enjoy this masterclass. So I won't say that much right now. Let's get cracking because we're gonna, we're gonna do Filippo. Oh, sorry, by the way, Filippo. Filippo is my head chef from Miami. Filippo, say hello. hello. So we've done a lot of stuff. We've been to Makoko Market, where I bought the fish we're going to cook today. And I have to say, my bargaining skill was very good. You know, it started at 10,000 Naira. And I said, five. I had a point, because I had a, initially, before doing that, um, a dear friend told me that when you get to the market, this is what you do. They said 10, I said 5, but when you said, when you said well, that 7 is okay. But guess what? I settled at 6. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Let's just crack in. So today we're going to do a lot of stuff. It's a marathon today. So please, um, feel free to ask any question. We might kind of get engrossed in what we're doing. What I wanted to do was actually give you a kitchen fill. So we're going to do about maybe 6, 7 dishes today. And um, I hope you enjoy it because we'll pass it around and the lucky ones will get to taste it. And please feel free to tell us what you think about it. If it's bad, blame Filippo. If it's good, of course it's me. <laughs> but seriously, Filippo is my wingman and he's always getting me out of trouble. Filippo, are we ready? Good. Okay, today we're going to start with a very classic dish we do at La Petite Maison, which is the, where's the fagra, Filippo, and the bread? Which is the black leg chicken. Unfortunately, I had to bring this all the way from England today. And what we're going to do, we're going to stuff it with fagra and bread. But before we do that, we have to season the fagra. Where's the salt? It's over there. Thank you. And the peppers where? Okay. While I do that, Filippo, what will you do? Slice the potato gratin. Yes. The other dish we're going to do today is a gratin. It's a dish that everybody asks me, why does it taste so good? And all I say is, you know, it's TLC. But for me, cooking is something you really have to use your head, your heart, and your hand. It's very important. What we do at LPM is always very simple. We don't play around too much with food because we believe that when you have a great ingredient, you don't really have to do much to it. You just have to show it a lot of tender love and care. And that's good enough. But anyway, we stop the fagra now. And then we're going to seal it, tie it. So please, people. Feel free to ask me questions if you want. Put my hands over there. I think that's enough, no? Yeah? Okay. Boy, it's hot in here. That's enough salt. It should be. Huh? Yeah. It's so what would be the next thing you do? that on? OK. 
Okay. Got some olive oil? So I got some here, so. So we start by warming up the pan. A bit of olive oil. Oh, sorry, in this case, yeah, olive oil, yeah. Now we seal. What we want to do is actually seal the kitchen to give it a nice coloration. We're going to put it in the oven for about 20 minutes, then we'll let it rest. While we're letting that rest, we'll do all the dishes. And also, we have Taiwan that's going to come to uh, cook along with me. So what Filippo is doing right here is actually, what we do is we, we, we slice the potato, put a bit of salt in it, and let it rest there. What happens is that it releases a bit of starch, because when you do the gratin, it's nice when you have less starch, when you actually stew it in with the cream. So here we have cream and a bit of nutmeg. That is working. While we're waiting for that, I'll do something else. Another dish that we do at LPM that people go crazy about is the grilled aubergine with warm prawns on top of it. And uh, I met a lady yesterday that says, Yo, I hope you're going to do the warm prawn today. And I says, you know what? Why not? We'll do it. So we actually decided to bring it into the mix as well. So what we have here is actually aubergine that's been actually cut, salted, and grilled because of the time limit we have. And what I'm going to do is I have tomato fondant which um, basically is shallot, garlic, and tomato, and we've actually cooked and cooked it to so reduce it into a paste and almost like a tomato puree, but it's nice and fresh. Uh, so what we start by is actually, it's two layers. Sorry, Filippo, do you have a napkin or something like that? It's pretty hot in here. Can I have that, please? Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Sorry, guys. I just put this next to me here, so. And what we have here also is mozzarella. And what we've done is make thin slice. And we're going to do layers of uh, tomato fondant. The mozzarella. And there'll be another layer of Pesto. And what we have, um, actually, my mistake, this is not actually, it's pesto, but it's actually pesto without pine nuts. Instead of, front, instead of saying pesto, we say pisto because we eliminate the pine nuts and it becomes pisto. So a nice spread of that in the middle, but not too much because what will happen, once it gets heated up, it will spread. Uh, Filippo, do we have the other ones? Okay. So basically, this is one we did earlier, so we can get you guys to taste it too. Is it okay? Is it working? No? Should we try another one? Yeah, put it down there. It's okay. No, no it's not working? Yeah. Sorry, this thing happens. But we'll get there. The idea was to put this in the oven by now, so by the end of the show, before the end of the show, we're able to actually finish this dish up and actually... Okay, we're good. Yeah. How's the gratin? Cream ready? Okay, now, what we have here is a potato, and they've been sitting down for a little while, 
and it's released a bit of juice. So what I'll do also is actually squeeze it to get out the extra starch. Is the oven at 120? We're going to cook this at 120 Celsius, and it will take about 40 minutes to get ready. I got it. I got it, Filippo. I got it. And the next thing Filippo is going to do is actually going to do the baby chicken, which is another dish from LPM. And what we do with this dish is actually we serve it with preserved lemon, chili garlic, and we grill it in the oven. The thing about working in the kitchen is you learn to multitask, and also nothing will happen on time. And the only time I've been able to prove to my wife that I can multitask is when I'm in the kitchen. So feel free to talk to me while I'm doing this. <laughs> so right now we've got Filippo prepping the chicken. We're still in the baby chicken. And at some point, I'll put the aubergine in the oven. We're almost there. No one has any questions to ask? Any questions? All right, anybody? Believe me, I Hi can guys. multitask. attack. Hi, guys. My name is Shola Thompson, and I'll be uh, helping with uh, asking the questions, of course. If you're out there to ask the questions, uh, can I see your hand up, please? Uh, you, sir. It'll be interesting to see exactly what type of questions you have. One second. All right. Just go easy on me. <laughs> no. When you said you flew the chicken from England today, so Make I you was, say that properly. I don't hear you. You said you flew the <laughs> chicken from England today. So I was kind of curious. I wanted to find out, is there any difference between the chicken in England and the ones over here? Okay, good question. I like that question. You know the thing, and this is the truth, I don't use English chicken. The only chicken I use is French chicken because the French chicken is the only chicken that is really traceable. With the English chicken and most other chicken around Europe, they've been treated with, you know, with water, steroids, and everything, and I try to stay away from it. So it's well known that when Raphael goes out, don't serve him chicken unless it's a French chicken. <laughs> so, <laughs> but having said that, now to answer that question, in my time of growing up in Nigeria, believe me, the chicken here tastes good because they roam free. And unfortunately, the reason why I'm not using the local chicken today was because of the time limit I had. But what, that's what, I mean, ideally, I would have loved to have gone to a chicken farm and actually pick up my chicken. Like I went to Makoko and actually find the chicken, I'm sorry, the, the fish we're going to serve today. Does that answer your question? Okay, next. Good. Anybody else with a question? All right. Help me out here. I get nervous when it's so quiet. <laughs> Hi. So still on the chicken, I noticed that before you put it in the pan, you kind of pressed it down. Yeah. And so I wanted to know, you know, what that does and, you know, why you do that. I've never seen that uh, before. Basically, it helps it to seal properly. So me pushing it down, it gives it a better area surface in order for chicken to seal properly. And one of the reasons why we seal the chicken also, apart from coloration, it helps it cook better in the oven. It helps the salt to stick on the chicken. And then the one thing I didn't mention before, before prepping the chicken, we actually sold it about maybe a day ago. Okay. Because what happens is that I love chicken, but chicken without salt is pretty boring. Does, does that answer your question? All right. Let me move over to this side. Anybody in this area with a question? Sorry, now the chicken is going to go in the oven, and the oven is at 250 degrees. My question is, um, it's very nice us watching here, but is there any yeah. place where we can get the recipes? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Quantities. Say that again. The recipes. 
the yeah. actual amounts. Yeah. Is there, do you have a website or something we can go to? What I'll do, unfortunately, like I said, I was a bit disorganized, and actually, I, I didn't get enough time to do that, but what I will do, by the time we're done here today, by tomorrow or the day after, I will send the, GB, uh, the, the recipe to the, uh, to the bank's website where you actually can actually get the recipe. Before I became a chef, I was an engineer. The day I told my mom that I wanted to be a chef, you know what she did? She prayed for me for two years, <laughs> saying, I hope my son sees the light of day. <laughs> it says, after all that sacrifice I made, I came to England so you can go to school, you know, and get your school fees paid. Now you tell me you want to be a chef? You want to be a chef? Believe me, she got a lot of people to speak to me about it. You know what I told her? I said, Mom, you don't understand. What I really want to do is actually do food processing. So, but I, in order for me to do food processing, food processing, I need to know how to cook and understand how it all works. Then she says it's okay. But that was just uh, something, an excuse to let me off. But now she don't complain. Ooh, smoky. Uh, basically, what I have here now is I have two fish. I have done it in two ways. I have one with the skin on and one without the skin. Ideally, I wanted to serve both of them without the skin, but I was afraid that I was afraid because I wasn't sure how flaky this fish is. And will I be able to pick it up later on? It will be a disaster if I cannot do that. So I decided to work, you know what? We cook two, one with skin on and one without skin. Now, for me, the easiest one to cook is the one without the skin because I just have to just throw it in the oven. But with the one with the skin, the rule of thumb says you got to make sure it's crispy if you're serving it with the skin. So I'm going to try to make it crispy. If I can, I can always peel it up later on. So, but please, go ahead. Questions? All right, the next question. Um, the aubergine um, with the mozzarella, yeah. what was in the tomato sauce? It's amazing. It's just, it's just basically, it's very simple. All you have there is just tomato, garlic, and shallot. Nothing more. And you just cooked it down? And you cook it down. You start with a bit with of olive oil as well, yeah. You start with the shallots and you... Go yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, you want me to tell the process. So basically, true. I know you know a thing or thing about... Yeah. Where are you again? Yeah. Right, in front of, right in front of Oh, you're right, okay. Yes, that's what you do. What we do, we sweat the shallots. No, we start with the garlic. In the cold pan, not in a hot pan. Often you hear the saying that, you know, you should always put the... Uh, warm up the pan, then add the, add the ingredients when the pan is hot. But in case, with, in, when you're doing garlic, you start with a cold pan. Because what happens is that you want to slowly cook the garlic. Slowly, slowly cook it. And what happens is, when, you, when, the, when the garlic first hits the pan, there's a lot of, it's pungent. You smell it. It's quite, you know. But with time, after about a minute or two, it goes away. What you don't want, you don't want this to go into the tomato sauce you're doing or whatever sauce you're doing. You want to let it go out. Then that's when the tomato and uh, the garlic actually really works better. And that's why you have some people that says, I don't like garlic. But it's just how you use it. Okay, but there was something sweet. Was Sorry? that the shallots? The, the yeah, the, yeah the shallots, you cook it slowly because it makes it nice and sweet. Fantastic. Then after that, you know your stuff, I can tell. I can tell you know your stuff. Questions? So now, More questions? I have the pickled pepper on the fish. Then we're going to cut it into small pieces. Then you guys are going to get to taste it. Filippo, how are we doing on the chicken? Did, did you, chef, sorry. Did you season the fish before it went in the oven? What was put on the fish? Just salt, garlic, and a bit of thyme. Okay. Thank and you. something I normally do that I don't have, I put a hint of dry pepper. But in my hurry to get here today, I kind of forgot. But I hope it doesn't let us down. And I hope. So why don't you give the lamb to somebody else? Let's give the lamb to someone else to try. Yes, we'll yeah. Simple for folks. Well, yeah, okay. They can pick it up. They can pick it up. That's why it's called a lamb cutlet. You can pick it up. You know, it's funny. Another thing I remember. What is it with Nigerians using a fucking knife to use your air bar? I don't get it. You know, I, I lived in England for about 30 years. I haven't been. I came home and I went somewhere where people were using a fucking knife to eat there. But I said, sorry, please, forget the fucking knife. For me, my hand. I use my hand. The next question I was asked is later on, which I did not know. Someone says to me, Auntie Debbie said to me, Raphael, Raphael, have you swallowed? I mean, have you swallowed? I said, Auntie Debbie, what do you mean by swallow? 
Have you swallowed? When he did his hand like this, oh, yes. I said, you know, Auntie Debbie, last night dinner, I'm the only one that swallowed. <laughs> Hi, Chef. It's me again from the um, lemon dressing. I've actually made something very similar with honey. So if you can find um, Chardonnay vinegar, can you use honey? Because it tasted very similar to something I had whipped no, together. No, you, 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 okay, you can use honey, but you have to use a vinegar anyway. But maybe you have to find a, a vinegar, you might use a vinegar that's not so sweet, then you have to add a bit of honey. And I do that. I use a lot of honey in my cooking as well. Okay. Because I need to balance out the savoriness with the sweetness. There's got to be a balance. If you don't have that, and for me, good food is when you put your spoon in there, you have one spoon, you can't wait to put it back to have another. You okay. know? Yeah, so Thank you. you're right. Good. Okay, Filippo, we need to do the dessert very soon. We've done about everything now. We're running out of time, and we need to do dessert. There is no... I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. We cannot call a meal a meal until you've had your dessert. It's very tiring. And I'm going to do one of the popular dish I do also at La Petite Maison which is a French toast. In France, in French it means pampadou. Pampadou means lost bread. You know why they call it lost bread? Because during the war, there was a lot of scarcity on bread, produce and everything, and people don't want to throw things away. So the French, you know, had this idea to use the old bread that's gone stale to make a dessert. So what we have, but what we've done is actually, we've bettered it. And instead of using just normal bread, we use brioche. So the only time I use butter in my cooking is when it comes to the dessert. Because dessert without butter ain't no dessert. So basically, now we have the brioche. We're going to put sugar on it. People has got the pan ready for me. And then we're going to caramelize it. So where's the sugar, Filippo? In the meantime, is the chicken almost ready, Filippo? The gratin is almost ready? Okay, once the gratin is ready and everything, we pass it over there. Uh, ladies, can we hurry up? People are hungry. And could you find those people that haven't eaten anything yet and give them something to taste, please, yeah? Okay, please, make sure we do that. So what I'm doing right now is putting a generous amount of sugar on the bread that's been soaked in milk, egg, Vanilla. And what I do, I heat up the pan, and I will gently, in a pan with clarified butter, I will put the bread in there. And it will caramelize. Because we're running out of time, just in case I had some ready for us. So, Basically, this is one we did earlier. But I'll still show the process of this while I have this in the oven, okay? So, Filippo, are you almost done there? Two minutes. Two minutes? Okay. I'm sorry the kitchen is messy. Honestly, we work very tidy normally. But it's not easy when you're not at home in your own kitchen, you're, you know? Things take twice the amount of time, and you know, no, no, this needs to go in the oven. This needs to go in the oven, then we need to caramelize it. It needs to go in the oven. We need to put it on the tray. You have a parchment paper, we need grease food paper. You got it? Thank you so much. Let's put it in the oven and let it cook. So, so far, what have we had? We've had the grilled aubergine, we've had the lamb cutlets, we've, the fish is about to come out, we've had the chicken. We, we've had, what else have we had? The pasta. Uh, we're about to have the black leg chicken, the fish, the gratin, the pompadour, and the black leg chicken. So we're almost home. Oh, I hope this won't be a disaster. Oh, no. I know you can't leave me alone, Filippo. You know that. What would I do without you? Sorry. Can you go with the fish? You good? Okay. The bread, the oven is hot, yeah? Okay. Okay, Filippo, do you have a, do you have something that's not been into a savory dish yet? I need something, a spoon, do you have a spoon? A clean spoon? Okay, you know, I use my hands. Okay, can you see that, guys? Can you see that? 
caramelization. Now turn it over the other side. And that's what we've done with the bread you had over there. So before what we do, before service, what we normally do is we do the caramelization, we let it cool down, we portion them, and then as we need them, we throw them in the oven, we take them out, we put some sugar, we caramelize the top of it, and we serve it with a bit of ice cream and some honeycomb. And of course, and some caramel. So we're almost there. Yeah? What? No, sir. No, sir. What? Yeah, we need the sauce. That's the pan, no? Put, it, put, a, put a bit of uh, chicken juice there. Okay? What? Eh? Okay, we're wrapping up now. Okay, I've been told that we need to wrap up. Let's serve the chicken quickly. Uh, we do the, uh, we do the, uh, the bread is almost ready. Ice cream almost ready. Okay, we're almost there. Sorry, guys. Um, sometimes I get too carried away. And uh, sorry, we're almost there. But anyway, this is what happened. This is what we do. We take it out, we portion it, but in this case, we'll put it aside. We've got one in the oven, we'll take out very soon. Give us about two minutes. Can you guys give us another five minutes, then we're done. Five minutes, Tian, good? Thank you very much, promise. So, Filippo, let's, let's, we give the chicken, yeah? You got a bit of a... Chef Raphael, you, uh, could you take some more questions? I, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Can I have the honey, honey, honey? Oh, no, okay, what? Now, I'm just have, you know what I told her? The lady asked me, do I use honey? Uh, yeah, hey, I'm gonna put a bit of honey Hi, chef. in the chicken juice. It gives it better flavor. So I just put a drop, just to balance the savoriness with the sweetness. Okay, hello, chef. Um, a bit of time. Can I talk? Can. Hello, chef. Yeah, go ahead. Um, why didn't you use egg for the um, French toast? Herbs. Egg, eggs, eggs. Eggs for the French toast. Yeah. Because it, that's, a, that's, a, that's just the, the natural recipe that we have. It's eggs, milk, yeah. sugar, vanilla. cream, and vanilla sticks. It's just a recipe. I, I, it's, that's how it was made, and it works. So I cannot really give you an answer to that. All I know, it works. Where did I put the spoon? Filippo. Okay. All of a sudden, I can't. Oh, that's my phone. There. More Thank questions. More questions. Good. This is ready. Okay. Okay. Let's pass that along. And this is, guys, the black leg chicken. And this is the number one lapidim is not dish. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You see. That's it. Uh. That's it. Okay, dessert. There you go. It's too high? It's all right. It's ready, Filippo. Let's take it out. We just, we're out of time. Let's go. Let's take it out. Let's, let's take it out. Let's, let's put them in. Let's put them together. Get a good cold tray. Let's flip the bar. Have you flipped it? Can we get a new bar, please? Whoa. Get a clean bar. Okay, guys, you got the blowtorch? Can we get a tray, please? We do it on the tray, on the platter. You know what, Philippe? Let's do it on this one. Oh, you got something for me? The same one. Can we have? Okay. Sorry, guys. We're almost there. We're almost there. So, for those who got to taste the lamb, how was the lamb? Amazing? Good. And also the gratin is ready, and we're going to serve the gratin a bit with the black leg chicken. Sugar? Where's the sugar? Go down. Could you get the honeycomb and let's break up the honeycomb quickly? Okay, I'll leave Filippo to do this, and I'll just have a quick chat with you guys before they kick me off the stage. I want to say thank you so much for coming in. 
It's an honor and a privilege to be here. I want to thank GT Bank for the amazing show they put on. You know, I was saying to Shego, I said, you know, it takes not only a madman, <laughs> but someone of great character and conviction to do something like this. You know, I, um, I, when I was told about this, I didn't imagine I would see this. I never imagined that I would see this in Nigeria because this is what we do in Europe. And when Shagun told me, when I met Shagun, and he told me about it in his office and everything, and we had a good laugh, and I got here, and all I could think about was a movie called The Fields of Dreams. Do anybody know the movie The Fields of Dreams with Kevin Costner? Yes. You know? In the movie, Kevin, uh, in the conversation uh, that was heard, it says, you know, if you build it, they will come. You know, when you dream big and you build something and look at all these people we have around us, it's amazing. Thank you, Shego. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, 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 thank you. And not only that, you know, I want to say, I am so proud to be Nigerian. I am so proud to be Nigerian. Even though I have been away for almost 31 years, honestly, Nigeria is in my blood. I love this country so much, and I'm amazed by what you guys do. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, what's up, guys? They call me DJ Spinner, a.k.a. The Cap. You enjoyed the video you just watched? Please, please subscribe and Danny TV. Just click below and subscribe and you can watch more amazing videos.